Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for gathering uh, here today. I have had an absolutely busy last two weeks. Um, I, I, I'm just back from new mayor school. That is a thing. So I spent the last three days with um, about uh, 26 uh, mayors, elects, current mayors, and past mayors getting all types of advice. And you know, one of the things that I touched on was the um, selection of um, picking a team. And I will tell you, I was also in Newark uh, two weeks ago, and I got some, one of the best pieces of advice I got from, from, from a, a, a current mayor um, that's, that's getting ready to go into his third term. He said, let me tell you something. People are going to tell you uh, who you should pick, what you should do, and all those things. And you want to take all those things and you want to weigh them. But at the end of the day, it is going to be your decision. And you have to make sure that you have two elements that are important. Number one, you have to trust them. Three elements that are important. Number one, you have to trust them. Number two, they have to um, have good chemistry with you. And then number three, they have to share your vision and values. And if you look back there, you see the, the mission, vision, and values of the Evans administration. We rolled those mission, vision, and values out the day after the campaign with the um, county executive. And anyone that is joining our administration will, um, will have to have those mission, vision, and values. I will tell you that um, I am excited about the individuals that we are selecting in this first round of appointments. I still have a lot more work to do. But I feel great that I'm, that I'm ahead of schedule. And how I know I'm ahead of schedule is I was with a bunch of mayor, mayor elects. And I said, yeah, on Friday, I'm going to announce about um, 13, 14 appointments. And they said, wow, OK. You, you're, so that made me feel good that we are um, right on schedule with still a lot more work to do. So I want to um, thank uh, also my transition team, who has been working hard um, in advising me over the time. Uh, Tom Argus is here from the team. Um, Ajamu Kitwana, who is chair of the transition team is also here um, in the back, and Nancy Johns Price was running around. And then my, the staff to the transition team, who will also be joining me at City Hall, Daniela Varis and Courtney Thomas, you won't, you won't see them much. If you see them, that means you're in trouble. They like to usually be behind the scenes, but they are wh who um, keeps me moving um, as we go forward. So um, I'm going to name, uh, announce some, uh, the, the first set of appointments today. And I want to start with um, our, our, our chief of staff, um, uh, Tammy Mayberry. Um, Tammy, if you can just come in, and, and as, I, as, I, as I talk about you, just come forward. It's kind of like in church. <laughs> See, in church, they would say, come on. Now, I'm not going to do a collection plate after this. Although I know James Brown's got, you know, I know, he, I know he's making all that money over at XXI. Um, so I, I'm just proud to be able to um, have a star, all-star person in my, in, in, in my um, and she wants to take see a picture oh. of you without the mask. Um, an all-star, and then she'll put it back on uh, when she goes back with the group. But uh, an all-star hitter when it comes to the chief of staff. Um, Tammy Mayberry is a um, gem in this community in Rochester, and we're blessed to have her here, even though she's originally from Buffalo. Um, we, love, we, we love Buffalo. You'll see that theme a little bit here. Um, but she has nearly 20 years of government affairs and public engagement experience with a proven track record of working with mayors from inside the mayor's office. Tamara, um, and, and she goes by Tammy. Um, Tammy has significant legislative and legal experience and, have, and has worked at the city, state, and federal um, levels. Tammy has worked for the U.S. House of Representatives, um, former United States Senator Harry Reid, and if you guys know who Harry Reid was from Searchlight, he was a boxer, was it Searchlight? Yeah. Searchlight. Mm -hmm. um, um, she has been Deputy Director of Government Affairs for the City of Chicago, Deputy Associate Director for Public Engagement for the White House National Drug Control Policy, and her most recent role has been um, as a Director of Government Relations for the New York State uh, Empire State Development Corporation. She is a graduate of Ithaca College, Ithaca is gorgeous, and also a uh, graduate of the George Washington University Law School. Tammy will be absolutely critical in our economic development efforts in, in coordinating um, all that happens within the mayor's office and also uh, will play a key role in government relations. One of the things I look for is if I said, hey, I need you to call Clarence Anthony, most of you in this room wouldn't even know who Clarence Anthony is, but who's Clarence Anthony? He's the head of National League of Cities. National League of Cities, she can pick up the phone and call him. If I said I needed you to call uh, such and such from the U.S. Conference of Mayors or call Mayor Fisher in, um, in Louisville, she knows these individuals and she knows that she will be able to help make these connections. This is what I'm looking for. Um, if, if I need you to call this foundation and see what we can do to be able to do that. Let's talk about how we can make sure we have a strong, cohesive relationship with City Hall. It is important that we recruited the best talent. Now, some people may be upset because I had to tell some, some of the folks here, I said, listen, we need good talent in our city just, just for a little while. So um, I'm coming for some of your talent. But they're not coming to, to serve me. They're coming to serve the city, uh, citizens of the city of Rochester. So Tammy, 
Thank you so much thank for you. stepping up and agreeing to serve, and I look forward to all the work that you will do on behalf of the citizens of, of Rochester, and I'm proud that you have the confidence in me to be able to serve in the Evans administration. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I want to move on to um, one of my best amigas. <laughs> Come on up. Um, Hilda Rosario Escher, who will serve as director of special projects. Um, as many of you um, that have been in this community for a long time, none of these, none of these names should seem like, like, oh, who are these people? Um, Hilda um, has over 30 years of experience in, human re in the human resources field and has a record of serving this community. She spent over 25 years at Ibero American Action League, and she retired as president and CEO after serving 13 years in that role. Um, Hilda is everywhere as it relates to boards and commissions. Um, she's been on the board of New York State Empire Development. Um, New York State Regional Economic Development Council. She's been on that board. She serves currently as chair of the programs for the New York State Office of Mental Health and Substance Abuse. Why is that so important? What have we been talking about during this pandemic? Mental health, substance abuse, all the things that are uh, challenges in our community. I don't have to, she doesn't need an education on why, why these issues um, are important, why they're bubbling to the top. She knows it. She's been working in it um, for years. She also serves on the boards of Common Ground Health, Strong Museum of Play, um, and uh, she's a graduate of the University of Puerto Rico. One, one of the, and I've known Hilda I'm, for years, but one of the things I remember that really um, showed me who Hilda really was was when, uh, was it Hurricane Sandy? Maria. Maria. Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. And I remember I did a, um, uh, at the Red Cross calling on behalf of, um, for, uh, call, answering the phone on behalf of the Red Cross to raise uh, funds for, for Maria. And there were some people here, and obviously we had government donate money. We had, we had uh, human resources, human services organizations all do that. And Hilda um, paid the rent, paid for hundreds of people, not, not through government or grants, but out of her own pocket for these folks that were basically refugees because of climate, because of the weather, because of the hurricane that happened. And I think that that shows you the type of individuals that we're bringing into this administration. Not only are they competent, but they are also compassionate, and they are bringing um, a sense of serving others. Everyone here must understand that it is the, port the, the, the importance of servant leadership. And I want to thank you for um, being that um, servant, uh, Hilda. Hilda will be absolutely critical in a multitude of the projects that we will be working on. She worked very closely with Tammy and the rest of the indiv individuals in the administration. But she also was no stranger to picking up the phone and calling folks not just from um, across the state but across the country. Um, she has those connections, she has that understanding, and it will be invaluable to um, an Evans administration, but more importantly, invaluable to our city. So Hilda, thank you so much for agreeing to serve, thank you. and I look forward to the how future. How did you find out about the rent? <laughs> See? She said, how did I find out about the rent? I, I'm telling you, I'm like, I'm like I, I could have been a private investigator in my, in my other days. Um, we, we, we went west again, but she's still a Rochester person, Dr. Rose Nichols. Dr. Rose Nichols, director of... Um, of, of, of human resources, again, another individual, another person that has extensive experience, having worked in government and the not-for-profit sectors. Um, she has worked for the United Way of Greater Rochester in a variety of roles. She has worked for the federal government of the United States, the Department of Agriculture, under two presidential administrations, um, serving as the administrative officer. And for the city of Rochester, she has served as the affirmative action officer, and, and currently is the Deputy Director of Human Resources, where she has overseen many projects um, and human capital-related initiatives. She's a graduate of my alma mater, the University of Rochester, Roberts Wesleyan College as well, uh, and she holds a doctorate from um, St. John Fisher College. Um, sometimes people just, you just kind of click with people when you, when you talk about your mission, vision, and values. And um, I, I talked to her about the importance of the employee experience. Which, which is just so important, and she got it um, immediately. I, I talked about what, what I wanted to do. But more importantly, um, very few people sometimes, you, you, ha you, have a, you have a meeting and you invite them. Um, and I never tell people why I was inviting them, so I don't want them to hang up the phone. So I would always say, just, just come see me, I want to catch up with you. And then they say, oh, wait a minute, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't expecting this. But Rose had already um, read our mission, vision, and values. And she didn't know why, why, why she was coming, but she knew them. And to me, um, that is absolutely critical because that is how we are going to be leading um, this, this administration. So um, as you see from her background, she probably could go anywhere um, in this country. 
uh, with her federal government experience um, in, in such a high level role that she played. But she has said that she will um, step up to serve the city of Rochester. So Rose, I want to thank you for um, agreeing to step up and I look forward to um, working with you very closely. Thank you, thank you Rose. Um, next up is someone probably of all the folks that are up there, I probably have known this person the longest. Director of Communications and Special Events, um, Barbara Pierce. <laughs> Barbara, come on up. Um, me and Barbara met when I was still a, uh, in, in high school. Uh, we served on the Monroe County Fair and Recreation Association board um, together, and that was a long, long time ago. We were the youngest folks, I think, on that board. And um, immediately impressed with um, Barbara. Barbara is a business leader with decades of experience developing teams and driving business growth both in the not-for-profit and corporate organizations. She has effectively trained, coached, and developed executives, employees, and teams with an understanding um, and, and enthusiasm. Um, internal, external, strategy, planning, crisis response, she brings all of these things from a local, regional, national, and international experience. I've even been trained by Barbara before on um, crisis communications, public speaking. Um, I've, I've, I've done all those things under here. Um, Barbara has been a managing partner of public relations and director at uh, Dixon Schwabo Advertising. She's done strategic communications director at Kodak and was president of Tipping Point Communications. Um, and she currently serves as chief development officer of United Way of um, Greater Rochester. And she's also a U of R grad, it's like a fellow yellow jacket as myself. Um, Barbara will be um, invaluable. And to those of you that are in the media, um, Barbara gets you, she will feed you. I know you get hungry, I know you gotta eat. And I'm gonna make sure you eat. Make sure, make sure you're fair. Barbara's gonna make sure that you treat me fair, but more importantly, we're gonna make sure that we treat, treat you all with respect. So when you file that FOIA request, um, all those in the legal department now, um, and you may, you may talk to us, we're gonna make sure that we do that. She's gonna help us with um, our transparent communication. Um, and she's also gonna make sure that we, um, that, that she understands that she represents Rochester. And that we wanna position um, Rochester as a place where we want people to go, and, the, and that comes from communications, that comes from special events. She will be a very popular person in Rochester um, because um, I think there are so many people who want to help, and we will have to see uh, in, in which ways we can plug people in to be able to help them. So I am just incredibly um, thankful. Um, I, how I got Barbara, I tricked her a little bit. I said, Barbara, I want to talk to you about just communications in general. And she came in, she said, oh, okay. And then I said, and I think you'd be perfect. <laughs> and then I said, Ajamu, lock the doors. <laughs> and, we were, and we were able to get it. So Barbara, I thank you so much for stepping up. I, I look forward to um, our continued partnership. And, and I'm not joking when I tell you that it's been over probably close to 25 years yeah, exactly. from when I first um, met Barbara. And I am so looking forward to working with you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> um, our, our Director of Office of Management and Budget, um, Chris Wagner, couldn't be here um, today. But um, many of you may know Chris. Chris, 30-year uh, experience in um, budget with the city of Rochester, um, a trusted advisor. I've, I've known Chris um, since my days at the school board when I started something called the 333, um, an honest broker. He has worked for every mayor since Ryan um, and, and a very, very um, great um, advisor, I think, to everyone um, in the city. Um, this next person I'm going to bring up, um, there's a couple of people that have just known me forever. Um, and, and these next two definitely have. Um, j probably just as long as, 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 as uh, Barbara, I call him the problem fixer, um, service special assistant to the mayor, uh, John B., John Brock. Um, I go by John, he, 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 I, I call him John B. Um, usually John likes to be uh, behind the scenes, um, so, you know, so get, but he's looking good today. <laughs> looking good today. Usually, you, usually he's fixing something and he's got some paint. And, he, and, he's, and, and you know, I, I called him, I said, John, I need something with my dad. Oh, I'll be right over, I'll be right over, fixing a light. Um, he, he can go do that. But this, the John Brock, um, I've known John Brock since um, my days at the University of Rochester. He is one of the smartest um, individuals I know, but more importantly, he's also one of the most compassionate. And that is what we want. We want a, we want a mix of um, compassionate, um, compassionate understanding for why Rochester is important. Um, he spent his career um, in, in, in working in um, public uh, relations, polling, um, a passionate believer in the citizen voice. Um, John spent years at uh, Greenberg, Quinlan, Roslyn, Roslyn um, in Washington, D.C. Um, he served as my chief strategist. 
Um, and he brings a unique blend of data analysis and problem solving to the many projects that we will have, and he's been doing that over the years. One of the things that John will be tasked with is um, translating uh, the citizen voice. So, so what, what, what happens so often, and I, and I got this from one of my, my network of mayors across the country, um, so John's going to be busy. Often what happens is, is that someone will say, this is, th this, is, this is the community, I'm speaking for the community. But we have nothing to back up the data to show that they're actually, spe actually speaking for the community. We want to be able to have on a dashboard, this is what the community is really saying. This is how many people are saying it. This is the area that they're saying it. This is their issues in that area. This is how we're going to zero in on it. Here are how it needs to be able to work with the rest of the departments. Here's how we take the data from 211, 311, 911. Here's how we be able to do that. The, the, days, the days have to be over where someone can tell you, um, hey, you, you need to do it because I said so. Well, we want to do it because you said so and it's important, but we want to make sure that we are capturing all the things that individuals are saying. So if in the 19th Ward they're saying that they're having a problem with um, a, a light that's not, that, that's not working regularly, if we know that we're getting that, um, that, that same thing by five or six people, we want to make sure that we capture that and say how many people are doing that, and then that will for force us to be able to fix it. That, that's customer service. Um, and we want to be able to make that the highest, uh, the, 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 at the highest levels. If, someone say, if, if it keeps coming up in a survey and, and, and with us working with different folks across the community that, hey, you got five or six different parking meters and they're all different, some people may not care. And you may get five or six people that say that. But if we start seeing trends where people are saying that on a regular basis, we want to be able to deploy and fix that. So um, he will be almost like the chief problem fixer in making sure that we are translating what people are saying from the constituents in a way in which it is captured and reported back out to the community. So, so we just don't want to say, I heard. People are saying. Now, you get a lot of that when you, when, you, when you become mayor. A lot of people are saying, okay, how many people are saying that? Your brother, your sister, your mother, and you. You're the, you're the one that's saying it. You didn't, you didn't survey and talk to five or six or 700 other people. This is you that are, that, that are saying this. So we want to be able to quantify that. We got to take data and then use it in a way that's going to that, that, that's gonna work so we can stop having people saying, I heard, or they. And then the they is like them, three of their friends, and their Facebook group. <laughs> So we want to be able to take that um, to the next level, and I want to thank you, Mr. Brock, for being able to do that. I know, I know, I got him up here. He's got a suit on. I know. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Get you working. Um, so, uh, Mr. Victor Saunders, <laughs> uh, and somebody else who I've known probably over 25 years. Um, I, I know some people are very upset that I'm taking him. I, I got a text this morning, but I said, I, I said I'll, I'll call you back after it's over. Um, so we were going to come up with something called the gun czar. And my wife said, czar. And then other people said, czar. I, I, I don't like that title. Um, so I said, you know, we need to, we need to in, in, encapsulate what that would really mean. So this, it, this will be, he will be one of my um, top advisors. Um, the mayor's advisor on violence prevention programs. Um, Victor, um, and I'll say a little bit about him, then I'll, I'll tell some other stories. Um, Victor is a former supervisor of Youth Intervention Specialist for Pathways to Peace. He was there in the beginning, in the beginning, right, when it, when it started. He helped launch Pathways to Peace, um, served there for 16 years, currently serves as a socio-emotional um, specialist team leader for the Center for Youth Services, uh, specifically at number eight school in the Rochester City School District. He has over 30 years of experience working with those in high-risk behavioral issues, violence, and gang involvement. Um, during his career, he has had the honor of leading various nationally recognized best practice models for youth intervention. Those efforts were coordinated nationally by nationally renowned professor of criminology and the director of the Center for Public Safety Initiatives. He's worked with John Clofus, and as well as Dr. David Kennedy, who was the director of the Center for Crime Prevention and Control at John Jay uh, College of Criminal Justice in New York City. Here's the thing with Victor, and, he and here's why um, I'm so great to be able to have him on my team. Victor can go in a room and talk to the district attorney, U.S. attorney, but then Victor can walk out here and talk to um, the folks that are laboring in the vineyard or the boys that are hanging on the corner. He has the cachet, he has the respect, um, and he has the ability to be able to help us coordinate all of these different violence programs, bring them together to be able to make sure that we are having the best possible impact. Um, I first met Victor when he first started Pathways to Peace. Victor may not remember this, but I had a white Rochester Challenge Against Violence. You remember Rochester Challenge yeah, Against Violence? Yeah. Rochester Challenge Against Violence, it was, it was 96, 
the Olympics were coming through town. We were having similar issues with violence. We were trying to bring down violence. 1993, uh, Bill Johnson was coming in as mayor, and we had the highest level of violence that we had. And we said, what can we do? Pathways to Peace was a piece of it. Um, Rochester Challenge against, uh, against, against violence. And we, and we did some. I, I was participating as a youth, but we did some creative things. Yeah. Midnight basketball. I mean, you, you name it. We tried everything to try to make sure. We, how long, how many days can we go without a, a, a shooting? We did creative things. We had the Olympic torch come through the city of Rochester. I remember standing on the steps of City Hall. I don't know if Nancy Johns Price is, is here. Right? She's probably still waiting downstairs. Is she still here? I heard her say yes from the back. Nancy, you may remember this. In 96, and we stood on the steps of City Hall with the Rochester Challenge Against Violence t-shirts, and we had the Olympic torch because it was going to be in Atlanta, and they were going through each of the cities, and we stood there. But we did that as a way to try to get people to know that you could go to the Olympics. You don't have, you don't have, you don't have, to, get, you don't have to be, be get involved in violence. And Victor was a part of so many of these different things. He was in demand and still is in demand nationally. And uh, Mr. Victor Saunders, I am just absolutely honored to be able to welcome you back to City Hall. And I know that you will do an amazing job. I promise I won't work you too hard. Um, but um, I am going to work you hard. But I, I am just so grateful for you to be able um, to be here. So thank you, Victor. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Um, and the person who will have probably one of the hardest jobs in the administration, and someone I've known for a long time through her years at Leadership Rochester and now at City Hall, uh, Josanne Reeves. Um, known Josanne for a long, 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 long <laughs> time as well, since my youth days. Um, Josanne um, has a broad record of, of, of history in this community. I, I, I enjoy working with her as the liaison of the City Council, which is not an easy job. But City Council um, are our partners, and we want to make sure that we do everything humanly possible to make sure that we have a great relationship with City Council. Um, I'm in regular contact with all of my City Council members. Um, as a member of City Council right now, I talk to all of them, all of them right now, all nine of them right now, all eight of them, um, regular contact with them. And Josanne brings years of community leadership experience to her role as liaison on the City Council. She spent over 17 years as Executive Director of Leadership Rochester program that inspires and educates vibrant, diverse network of individuals who provide leadership to transform and strengthen the greater Rochester region. I bet you there's at least one or two people in here that went through Leadership Rochester. Raise your hand if you're in this room and you went through Leadership Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So um, it, it's been, it, it's been um, a, a, a um, great um, program and organization. Um, she also spent 12 years as a legislative aide to City Council, so she gets the City Council side. Um, and she served on Sector 4 Community Development um, Corporation, and I was a youth representative on Sector 4 um, back in the day, and, on the, and, and before on the City of Rochester Zoning Board of Appeals. She's a graduate of Brockport. Um, so Josanne um, will be critical in terms of us making sure that we have a strong relationship with our legislative body, um, City Council, that we have put that as a top, top priority. We want City Council to be partners in all that we do. We have to have a strong legislative branch, but we also have to have strong collaboration. So I want all of our city council members to know that I think by um, having Josanne here signal to you that you will be um, a valuable part of, um, uh, of, of helping and working together and collaborating with the um, Evans administration. So thank you, Josanne, for agreeing to um, serve, welcome. and I look forward to working <laughs> with you. Now, this wasn't easy to do. Um, and I'm going to ask Linda Kingsley to step forward. Um, someone else who I've known probably just as long as a lot of the people that are here, when I was an intern at City Hall, Linda Kingsley was then Corporation Council. Um, last year we had, in 2020, we had some challenges, and I remember saying to um, our, uh, the president of council at the time and many of our council members, I said, we need um, uh, an attorney. And they said, oh, man, it might be expensive. I said, but well, we need someone who understands it has municipal experience. And I said, I think I know the person. She's my she, she lives in my neighborhood. I, I, I served with her uh, when, I, when, I, when I was an intern. She's no stranger to me. And I said, Let, let's have Linda, Linda Kingsley there. And then I had Linda Kingsley um, help with the transition. And then I called Linda and I said, um, I, was, I, I like calling people late, like, <laughs> because I figure they're tired. You, you get someone in the morning, they, you know, they might be, eh. They might, they're all ready to go for the day, so they, so they put you off. But if they're tired, you know, they, they may think it's important, too, if it's later. So I called Linda. I said, don't hang up on me. I got, I, I got an idea. And um, she said, okay, I'm listening. And I said, I, I need you to come back um, and serve as Corporation Counsel for uh, City of Rochester. Long pause. She said, I, w I wasn't expecting that. And I said, you always have to expect the unexpected. And then I gave her my, my line. Um, I'd rather have a slow yes than a quick no. And, um, and I'm glad that she was able to step up and serve. Linda. 
um, is an attorney with over 35 years of practice in the field of state and local government and law. She served as an adjunct professor at Albany Law School, teaching state and local government law for the past 11 years and has and maintained a, a, a legal consultancy practice here in Rochester, um, focusing on municipal law. And for the past year, as I said, she served as pro bono counsel to the Rochester City Council. And again, I hope that this signals to uh, my friends on City Council that we are serious about having a collaborative relationship um, with you. She served as corporation counsel for the City of Rochester for 12 years. Um, and prior to that, she was Corporation Counsel for the City of Binghamton. Um, she was counsel to the New York State Conference of Mayors and maintained a legal practice in Albany, New York as well. Um, she received a Juris Doctorate from Albany Law School. Um, she served as a chair of the Municipal Law Section of the New York State Bar Association and a board member of International Municipal Lawyers Association and the Monroe County Bar Association. And she is a frequent speaker um, and trainer on a wide variety of subjects from disaster preparedness, eminent domain, which is uh, always an interesting topic, risk management, labor and personnel issues, and municipal and police liability, all important issues that are important to Rochester. Um, Linda um, has um, instant credibility. She um, has a heart for our city, um, but more importantly, she has the knowledge and the um, wherewithal to take on um, this job. And I am so grateful that she did not hang up that phone, <laughs> and answer that call to serve. So thank you so much, Linda, and I look forward you. to working with you. Um, I want to bring up um, Mr. Uh, Richard, uh, we'll get to some of our commissioners here, uh, and, and, and um, Commissioner uh, of Department of Environmental Services, uh, Mr. Richard Perrin. Perrin, thank you. Um, Rich also came prepared with understanding the mission, vision, and, and, and value, so he got some extra points for that as well. <laughs> um, but Rich is a highly qualified chief executive um, with a nationally recognized experience in, in successfully creating and implemented, implementing um, inventive solutions to meet economic, land use, and environmental needs of diverse stakeholders through transportation projects, programs, and many, many other. Um, climate is um, extremely um, important to me. I know Rich understands that. Although we are um, in Rochester and blessed, I mean, we're one of the free, few cities that has a waterfall, a lake, and a river. Do you guys know that? Do you know that? That we had all three? I mean, that's, that's something that a lot of folks don't realize. Um, how do we leverage those assets? But more importantly, how do we take care of those assets? And that is um, the role of um, environmental services. Um, Rich has served as a regional planner for the Genesee Finger Lakes Regional Planning Council. He spent 14 years at the Genesee Transportation Council, served as executive director for almost 12 years, and he's currently associate vice president and director of planning services for T.Y. Lynn International, graduate of Fisher College and um, University of Buffalo. I am um, so glad that um, Rich is here. Um, we have the ability, we have the ability to leverage our assets. Right now, we have the resources to leverage our assets. Look out here. The opportunities are there. Um, anyone that goes into that conference room, you know I make you look out that window because I want you to see what's possible but also what the challenges are. And this, is, um, this will be an awesome task, an awesome job, but I know that risk. Rich will um, make sure that we take care of some of the key things, basic municipal services. So this, this is a role where you got to do both. You got to make sure you have the vision, but you also have to get the blocking and tackling down. Snow plows, <laughs> refuse, <laughs> clean drinking water. Those are, the, and that's part of our, our agenda as well. You, you see that in our mission, vision, and values. We talk about that, but we also talk about the future. How do we work with departments? So um, Rich will al also understands the importance of cross departmental collaboration. I think all of these individuals understand that. We have to make sure that our departments do not operate in silos and vacuums. Um, so uh, you are, you have to be a silo buster and I know that you will be. So Rich, thank you for stepping up, stepping out, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, see I got a call about this one. <laughs> Commissioner of the Department of Recreation and Human Services, Shirley Green, Dr. Shirley Green, please come forward. Um, uh, he said, you taking Shirley from us? I said, yeah, I am. I said, because she, I, I said, her city needs her. When the city called, she answered. And she had to think about it, too, for a while. Um, and she said, I got to go on vacation, um, but I, I, I'll let you know when I get back from vacation. I said, oh, uh oh, that's usually not a good sign. But I was happy when she um, stepped up. I think Shirley brings a great 
blend, exactly the blend that we needed at, at this time in our city, the great moment that we have in our city. And she started her career in the private sector. And that, that kind of um, intrigued me. Because she, then she said, I, I, then, I, then I asked her, why did you leave the private sector? She goes, because I, I wanted to have a bigger impact. So she went into education, which is the seminal issue of this day. I spent 14 years on the Rochester Board of Education, six years as president. And when I went down to um, meet with fellow mayors, there were very few other mayors that um, were on, on boards of education. All of them said, whoo, oh, how did you do that? So I got the battle scars to prove it. That's why I'm wearing this. I, I mean, my, my, suit, my, ja my shirts are extra long because they cover up the scars um, in education. But Shirley has spent 29 years serving in public education. Um, she has held positions as classroom teacher, assistant principal, principal, executive director of specialized services, and she currently serves as chief of schools where she has, I believe, over 20 schools and programs. Um, she um, gets it. She grew up in this city. Um, she used to be able to see the rec center. Wasn't it right by your house? Norton Village. Norton Village. She saw Norton Village. She knows what it's like to go there. You guys know where Norton Village is? If you don't, go look at the, we'll take you on a tour. We're going to do a tour <laughs> with all these folks to make sure that the media knows all the nooks and crannies. So she understands that. But why is it, why, why is it important to have someone that understands education? Because you have to understand that students spend about 133 hours outside of school. So what's happening when they're outside of school? The city, we have good distribution. That distribution centers are our rec centers, our centers, other programs that we may be a part of. How can we start to bridge that to make sure that education does not end when the school doors close? How do we make sure that we have a strong relationship with our school district and other educational partners? Because we have thousands of kids that are also in private, parochial, and charter schools as well. How do we make sure that we look at that holistically? How do we make sure we engage with all of the organizations, Rock the Future, Systems Integration? How does the Chief of Staff and Special Projects integrate to be able to do that with, with the commissioners, um, with the commissioner so she's not um, on a silo? All of these and connecting the dots. And, and I asked people, I always say, I, I'm, I, I do intelligence. So you see these briefings. I, I, I don't think I call, I call very few people to get this stuff. Did I call you guys? I, I, <laughs> I, I got the, I, I'm good. Um, <laughs> And I, and I asked, I said, um, I asked, and I asked them, I said, so why do you think Shirley Green, Dr. Shirley Green would be good for this job? And they said, because she has experience multiple, juggling multiple balls at the same time, and she's organized as heck. I don't know how she does it. That, that, that's the exact quote. And I said, man, that's what I need. Because we know the Department of Recreation and, and Human Services has so many different things that it does. From the public market to the R centers, so many different things. It's varied, and I believe that she will um, be able to do that. She um, is a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and she provides, um, has been involved with that organization for many years. I know she was just recording. I don't know if you still are. You were the recording secretary for a long time. I don't know if you still are. Um, she's a graduate of Delaware State University, Nazareth College, and holds a doctorate from St. John Fisher College. So um, I want to thank you for agreeing to come over across the street. <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I'm just thrilled about this. Um, and um, I am so uh, looking forward to um, serving with you and all that we're going to be able to do to take Rochester so to the next nice. level. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Green. Next up, um, we're making history here um, in an appointment of fire chief, uh, Mr. Uh, chief uh, Felipe Hernandez. Thank you. Um, Felipe, um, is an experienced chief fire officer with, dem with a demonstrated history of working in diverse mid-sized urban communities. He has over 22 years with the Rochester Fire Department. He served in a number of, of, of roles over his long career. And I think that, that don't, uh, don't, don't quote me if I get any wrong. I think I got him. I think I got him. I think I got him. <laughs> Firefighter. He served in the Lieutenant Training Division, Captain of Lieutenant of Suppression Division, Deputy Chief of Training, Deputy Chief of Emergency Operations, Deputy Chief of Suppression Division, Executive, De Executive Deputy Chief. And um, for the past year, he served as Interim Chief. Um, I'm making history here because I'm appointing him as the first um, permanent uh, Latino um, Fire Chief. And I believe he's probably one of the few, uh, the one in New York State, probably. Um, uh, but he is experienced. He comes um, as a graduate from Monroe Community College, State College at Brockport, has a master's. Our community loves our firefighters. They love our firefighters. Um, they um, support our firefighters. And we know 
that without a strong fire service in the city, without any of the strong emergency communications in the city, we're in trouble if we don't, if we don't, if we don't get that right. And Felipe's going to help us um, get that right. And he also shares my vision of making sure that we get more of our city residents interested in the fire service. We have to make sure that our people in our city can look at him and say, I too one day want to serve our city um, as a firefighter. And also going non-traditional routes to think to find people who may not be interested in doing that. They may not even think about the fire service. And he has that ability to be able to do that. So um, Chief, congratulations on making history. Thank you. Um, congratulations on um, serving. We, we'll celebrate more with all these people. Mm -hmm. um, but we're rolling out a bunch today. Um, but Chief, I still look forward to you serving and keeping um, our city safe. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Director of Emergency Communications, Michael Soretto. Um, Mike is also someone who I hit it off with um, immediately. He probably doesn't remember this. Um, he was walking at City Hall. I don't know if you were looking, looking you might have been looking for where the, where the meeting was um, when you first got appointment, appointed as um, Emergency Communications Director. And, I, and we just started talking. I don't know if you remember that. And, we, and I said, I said, he's, he gets it. He gets it. Um, Mike is a, is a, is a Navy veteran. He spent over 30 years with the New York State Police, um, rising to the rank of Major. Am I right? Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel. Lieutenant Colonel. Um, he was Director of the Division of um, Homeland Security and Emergency Services um, for the New York State Police. And for the past three years, he has served as Director of the Emergency Communications Department, overseeing all aspects of emergency communications. Uh, he coordinates 911 functions for the city police, fire, Monroe County Sheriff's Office, various towns and village and fire departments in the Ambulance Corps. He's a graduate of the FBI Academy. Um, you know, 911 is something you don't hear much about. But you hear about it if you call and you don't get an answer. And um, Mike's job is to make sure that when you call, um, you get an answer. Um, but Mike has also been um, creative. Um, with trying to recruit during um, the Great Resignation, is what we're seeing right now in the Great Recession. Um, and, and, and he also has been good at working with the county and our labor unions to make sure that we make this an attractive position for folks who want to who wanna come in. Um, but the other thing I'll say about Mike, um, absence of, of the emergency communication, he just has a um, clear-eyed vision about leadership and how you involve um, multiple folks throughout the community. So um, Mike, I look forward um, to serving with you, and I'm so grateful that you said yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, and we really have to thank this person, our in, uh, David Smith, um, interim police chief. Um, as you know, we're, we're doing a national search um, for um, police chief. There should be some legislation coming to city council, um, hopefully uh, in the next couple of days. Um, we're going to engage a firm public sector search to help us lead a national search. But um, when, I, when I called Dave, I'm glad he didn't say, you out of luck, I'm out of here. He, he agreed to serve as interim into a um, permanent one can be um, named Chief, um, Interim Chief Smith. Um, he spent his career in law enforcement, um, 29 years with the Rochester um, Police Department in um, various positions. Um, prior to ascending as um, interim chief, he served as uh, deputy chief of operations, um, and he will serve as um, interim chief as we get forward, get go forward. One of the things that I am um, very impressed with with uh, the, 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 the uh, chief about is is that um, he understands the importance of um, internal communications as well as external communications because that's how you build trust. That's how you build not creating vacuums. We, we have to make sure that you communicate with the citizens, but also the elected officials that are within government. Otherwise, we say, "Oh, what's going on?" Then we start saying things that might not be correct. But he makes sure that um, he is on top of it. He is stepping in um, at an awesome, awesome time that we have in this city. Tough, I mean, tough time in this city, things that we haven't seen in, in a generation. So I am so grateful, Chief, for you um, for agreeing to um, serve with us during this time. And I want to um, say that I look forward to um, working with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. It's Thank my you. pleasure. Thank you. Um, so that concludes the announcements for now. More will be coming. Um, I think I fed you a lot. <laughs> I know I, I saw some of you guys going back and forth. I know some of you guys are probably hungry for lunch. Um, I know the 12 o'clock news hour already started, so you're probably texting. 
Um, so I want to thank you all for coming. Just a couple of other things I want to touch on. Um, I, I want to say again that I want to thank all these talented individuals for answering the call to serve our great community. And as I work to advance economic and poor empowerment, building strong neighborhoods, and strengthening our public safety and investing in our youth, I will need strong leaders um, working by my side. And we will continue to announce appointments as we go throughout the, um, the week. I want to say um, that I am convinced that um, these individuals will work to build a bridge to Rochester's future and that they will also um, help us take Rochester to um, the next level. I want to thank you all from the media for coming and for your patience for, for being here. Um, the, the, the one thing I want to touch on before I close is just the COVID situation. Um, I've, been, I've been in regular contact um, with the county executive. And in fact, when I was in um, at, at New Mayor School, um, we got a briefing from um, Dr. Ashish Jha. Um, you know, he touched on the um, uh, Omicron um, variant. And I know that me and the county executive are working on a plan to try to get um, as many rapid test kits out. I know that we're going to get a lot of them here in the city of Rochester, but folks need to either get tested regularly or please um, get vaccinated. Um, I just got a, a, a text, my two boys, 10 and 7. They just got their second dose. Um, I got my booster. Um, I am extremely, extremely concerned about um, COVID and as the holidays come. Um, we cannot take this for granted. Um, we have to make sure that we are um, extremely vigilant. Um, so I am going to be on this like white on rice um, by working cooperatively with our, with our county executive. But I want to urge everyone to make sure that we are being, um, being safe. I mean, we're still wearing these things, but we have to do it um, for now. We have to make sure that we um, see these numbers um, decrease. So I want to thank you all for coming here today. Um, and um, stay tuned for um, you know future future announcements. I want to thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Yay! Maybe uh, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll take three. I'll take two. I'll take three questions. I'll take. I'll take three. Key, three key questions. Okay, hold on. Oh, Patty, you're first. Go ahead. <laughs> Is anybody surprised? Go ahead, Patty. <laughs> now that you have the scheme in place, and the the interim mayor has talked about he wants to work on a transition with the team. What is that transition going to look like? And what will the citizens be seeing in the next few uh, three it's, weeks before? Well, it's, it's going to be the same stuff that you haven't been seeing. Um, I, I don't know if you know. I, I talked to me and James Smith has had a standing one-on-one, uh, -on -one, I think, is it every other week? We got one at? One o'clock today. Yeah. So, um, so uh, you know, a lot. So it's it's going to continue to be that way. We um, will continue to uh, work on issues that are coming up. This COVID thing is something that we will definitely um, be talking about. Obviously, there's things around um, uh, uh, policing that we'll have to work on with the with the interim chief. Staffing um, is a still a still a challenge, chief. Um, so the the current mayor um, uh, Smith, myself. And the chief will, ha will have to think about um, think about those things. So it, it's, it's going to um, continue projects and things that are that are out there. Um, so yeah, it, it's 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 working. I will say that um, uh, in, uh, Acting Mayor Smith has been um, very very cooperative as we continue to uh, work through this transition, and we have a lot more work um, to do. So yeah, that, that's that's what it's going to look like, um, the way it's been looking. Constant communication and working together. Malik, I'm interested. All right, oh, sorry, uh, go ahead. Um, ladies first. Go. Sorry, go yeah, ahead. Um, and you are Eric Cost. Yes, thank you. Okay, you see, I'm learning the faces. Go ahead, <laughs> even with the mask. Any comment on the 26 number um, for National Guard members coming to Monroe County to assist in the whole staffing shortage? I know Rochester is especially hit hard with those neighborhoods yep. with the lowest vaccination rate. It's, it's absolutely critical. We need all hands on deck. And see, when you have, you know, I talk about the whole community approach. This is what FEMA does when, when things happen. You, you can't figure out who's going to do what. you got to organize the whole community approach, and that whole community approach includes National Guards, includes, includes the states. And if we're going to bring these numbers down, and then also if we're going to make sure that hospitals don't suffer, we're going to have to make sure that we call up whoever we can, um, folks out of retirement, National Guard folks, and others to be able to help um, serve our community. It is a major concern of mine um, with with, uh, with COVID. I think that we think that we can rock ourselves to sleep. I said that a long time ago, and I think we have a little bit. Um, but we can't have another shutdown. We can't. We can't. We can't do it. People's mental health won't allow for that. So we have to live with it, but we have to live with it, live with it in a way that's smart. And we know that vaccines work, and we know um, that um, testing is extremely important because then people can isolate. 
So um, yes, that's an, that's an important thing. I'll take one more. I'll take two more questions. You get one, and then and then we'll do one last Thank one. You. Yes. Um, I'm very curious what went into the selection of Dr. Green to lead the Department of Recreation and Human Services. Um, you talk about her, obviously her, very, her her long and distinguished career with with RCSD, um, but how do you think that background will help with the the way that uh, Dries has really expanded its mission just in the last 15 months since Mr. Prude's death became public? You know, adding uh, crisis intervention services, animal services, you know, the PIC team, all of that. So we'll revisit animal services, but that's a conversation okay. for another day. So how does, how does, what went into that selection? Yeah, I, I think, think she's good for that. I, I think the, the, the holistic approach of looking at all the things that make up an individual, the mental health piece, that's important. She has experience doing that. And, you know, I'll give you an example. When I called Dr. Green to check in with her, uh, you know what she was dealing with? She was dealing with um, uh, the family situation of the kids that were killed um, over in the Lowell Avenue area. So. There, there it is right there. So she understands. She understands a lot of the underlying issues that affect us in our community. But more importantly, she understands that we cannot have just an intervention approach, that our rec centers can be used as a preventative approach. Here's the challenge. In this community, we are so concerned about intervention. I need people that can be forward thinking. How do we implement the Youth to Work program? That, that department will be critical in that. How do we make sure that we are coordinating mental health with the county um, to make sure that, we're, that, that we are doing that? She understands that from a systems, systems approach. And also, how do, you, how do you handle multiple operations that are all under one roof in a way that still makes sure that you don't lose sight of the forest for the, 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 forest for the trees? And you're able to really manage that in a good way. She gets it. She understands it. She's experienced. But more important, and as the kids would say in school, she don't got to talk about it. She's been about it. You ever heard that? You probably not. I don't know what you're saying. All right, next question. All right, so I just want to go back to your trip to Newark. You touched on this in the beginning here today. My hero, um, Raz. Biggest takeaways, you know, do you foresee any of their policing plans working here in Rockefeller? Absolutely. I mean, R R Raz Baraka, and, and John was back there. I, I got to send Raz this clip. <laughs> um, they cut their homicides by 50, by, by, by 50 percent. This is Newark. Um, he has um, integrated um, social workers into um, conversations. So when he talks about violence, it's just not all law enforcement. It's, it's, it's everyone. The, everyone's at the table. Um, he, he's been able to do that. And in last year, he didn't, uh, during the George Floyd uh, unrest, there was no property damage or violence in his cities. And in 2020, there was not a single um, shot fired um, from, a, um, from, from, a, a, from a police officer. So they have a formula um, that, is working, that is working there. And you know, the form, you, know, you know, one of the things is hope is not a strategy. They actually have execution and work. So we will be deploying many of the strategies that, that Newark has. Um, uh, um, Ra Ra Raz Baraka um, has, um, has, has found a good formula that absolutely could work um, in Rochester. And um, he has proven it. And again, um, it's just not something that's esoteric. Oftentimes what we hear in this community is people have all these ideas and they're all esoteric. I, I, I can't tell you. We probably got 100 requests of people who want to who wanna spin an idea. What we need is practical um, things that have worked. And um, I think that in Newark we've seen some practical things that have worked. This is why Victor Saunders is here. He's worked on practical things that have worked. And, and, I, and, and, I'm out of, and I'm impatient. I need practical things that have worked. If I want esoteric conversations, um, I'll go back to university. Um, and I love to do that. Um, I'll put the patches on my elbow, and, I'll, and, I'll, and we can um, <laughs> wax poetic. We don't have time to wax poetic because we're costing lives. With that, I want to thank you all for coming. And um, stay tuned to the next, um, next event. Thank you. Oh.